children, because this is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Master's Word. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie. All Master's Word broadcasts are Christian internet radio programs directed at educating, edifying, and helping the body of Christ gain understanding of God's Word and to know just who you are in Christ Jesus. But let's pray right now, shall we? Father, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. It's just overflowing our lips. We praise you and we love you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and are doing. We adore you. We thank and praise you for your only begotten Son. And we thank you and that we can seek you and you'll always illuminate your word so that we gain proper understanding of it. You know, we thank you for the rhema word of God, the logos word, and for impartation and revelation knowledge, and for the gift of utterance and manifestation of your word, always alive and active in our hearts. Bless those that have ears to hear, Lord, as we endeavor to know you more personally and love you more deeply. Holy Spirit, we invite you to take over the broadcast. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. My friends, did you come expecting to receive from God today? Well, if not, you won't receive anything from him. So elevate your expectation level. And you know what's going to happen when you do? You're going to come away with a greater head and heart connection and knowledge and a, a better understanding of God's word. I promise. You know, we're moving more deeply into the word of God each time we meet. That takes a greater effort on our part to enter the depth of God's presence that we've been afforded. We, we found that the key to entering into the depth is soaking in worship. So please soak with me right now.
Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be wholly acceptable to you, and let your words be my words and my words be yours, and may they continually glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the assurance, substantiating of things hoped for, the conviction, rebuttal of things not seen. For by it the men of old received divine approval. By faith we understand that the world was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. We have discussed the fact that faith is substantiation or the substantiating of things that are hoped for, and that describes faith as a movement rather than a substance. That should be the way we understand faith, but the emphasis in the Bible speaks about faith as a condition and a movement and a state of being. So, being a state of being, you can move into it and out of it from time to time. Therefore, each time, uh, well, each not each time, but each step that we take, takes what? Takes faith. Each step we take, takes a view of the spirit world. The most important thing is this, that you must see the spirit world correctly. Get into that realm and know what God's plan is. Then come into the natural world and go forward. God will back you up with all of his resources. You know, we talked about this last time we met, that we substantiate by sending our faith into the spirit realm, which pulls the manifestation of the thing hoped for into the natural realm. So think about it. The men of God who lived in the, the Bible times, Noah, like, Nobody had seen rain up till that time. They didn't even know what it was. God was making the water come from the ground in the mist to water the vegetation. They'd never seen rain, and yet Noah was building an ark. You know, people chastised him and mocked him. They taunted him and scoffed at him. They didn't know what an ark was or what it was for in the middle of the dry land, a veritable desert, our inland most areas. No seas around, an occasional lake, but very few and very far between. So. Think about it now. <laughs> Think about the mockery people made of him. He was a laughing stock of his time. Hebrews 11 tells us that he was warned of things to come, things that are not seen, and therefore he moved. Faith is a movement. He was moved by what he saw in the spirit world. Whether it's your finances or health, actually any area, we have to despise and reject all evidences in the natural realm that are against God's word. If you want to exercise perfect faith, it's a position of being. You maintain your position. Come what may, maintain the position. If you maintain that position, something has to break through. God didn't look out into the darkness of the world in Genesis 1 and say, Hey, it's dark out there. In the book of Genesis, they didn't translate it with impact and power. Actually, in Genesis 1, it says, Light be, not let there be light. There is no let in the Hebrew. The word let weakens it. God was not saying, light, you can come in now if you want to, like an artist painting a picture and going, hmm, let's see, what color shall I make this sky? No. God spoke what he wanted. He rebuked the darkness by saying what he wanted from within the spirit realm to manifest here in the natural realm. So keep in mind that we're coming from one realm into another here, and the spirit realm is our truth, our reality. So we want what the spirit realm holds for us to manifest here on this earth. Why? Because it's what God promised us in his word. All those promises are for now, not when we get into heaven. We won't need them then in heaven. We'll be in the spirit realm back home. So God was substantiating and therefore he said, light be. He spoke to the firmament, firmament be separated. So the word let is not in the Hebrew at all. Let me ask you this. What are we doing? We're learning to operate like God. <laughs> you know, what we are and where we are today is what we have spoken into our own lives and visualized. We visualize what we have, what we have allowed to become in our lives, and we have the things, well, we can have things differently by visualizing the things we want to come to pass in our lives and sticking to the vision. So if you're willing to lay down your life as a living sacrifice every day, to bring the spirit realm into the natural realm, you will have those results. People may laugh, but it will still come to pass, my friends. Listen, faith is the substantiating of things hoped for. The things that are hoped for will substantiate when they, uh, uh, when they manifest. So, uh, most people have hope, but they don't know how to substantiate it. You see, one evidence of that is that you will see that they're, they're always looking at the natural. You can keep looking at the natural, and in 10 years' time, you're going to remain right where you are. I know people who have done that. They 
uh, start believing for something and then you, they ask you to agree with them. So you come into agreement, you're standing in faith 10 years and they've given up a long time ago. So listen, the word of God tells us that without a vision, the people of God perish. We have to have a vision to substantiate the things of the spirit realm into the natural realm. What does the word say? Well, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? <laughs> well, that word tells us that we, the just, shall sustain our lives on faith, calling those things that be not as though they were. In other words, bringing into manifestation our groceries, automobiles, homes, clothes, ministries, successes in life, overcoming hurdles that come our way by speaking the solution and standing on the victory that Jesus won for us at the cross. Think about it. We're supposed to live like that. We're supposed look, your paycheck isn't your isn't your uh, source. God is. So when you make you go to work and you make a paycheck, and that's your seed money. Yes, God gives you enough to pay your bills. But you pay him first. You give him his 10% and the rest of it he'll stretch. That 90% he will stretch beyond measure. And then he'll give you more than enough so that you'll have enough to pay your groceries, your bills, and everything else. But you give God his 10% first. And you do it willingly because you don't want to do it grudgingly. He actually provided it for you. He provided the job for you. You should be grateful, you know. And so... Um, what I'm saying is look to God for everything. He's your source. And then when you see in the natural realm, uh, you won't worry about whether you have enough money because you know that God will do it. And what do you do? You put, you put a pressure on your covenant. When it comes time to pay the, the mortgage and you don't have the mortgage or the rent and you have paid your tithes and you have paid your bills and you bought your groceries, but it's time to pay the, the mortgage and you say, Lord, this is on you. I have a covenant with you, and you said in your covenant with me that you would take care of me, that you would manifest these things for me so I didn't have to worry. So I'm not worrying. I know that you'll do it. And you know what? In the 11th hour, he's never early and he's never late. At the 11th hour, somehow, and it's none of your business how, he will get the, the uh, funds to you to pay the, the mortgage. So, you know, one of the things that... Um, that we see is either people talking in the, the natural realm or in the spirit realm. I like it when people talk in the spirit realm. I can't stand it. Sometimes when people talk in the natural realm, it always is negative. They say, but we must tell the truth. And you know, well, yes, the problem is that's the only thing that they're talking about, the situation or the circumstance in the natural realm. And the devil wants you to do that. He wants you to rehearse the problem. If Jesus talked in the natural all the time, he wouldn't have been able to do his ministry. To Jairus, he said, what? Fear not. He released faith. The news came that the daughter had died, and he said, I'm the resurrection and the life, and he speaks forth what he wants. Now, we've seen two examples of how when Peter moved out of that position, automatically the faith diminishes, and he's on his way to little faith or no faith. Remember? Okay, so the opposite is, of this is found in Matthew 8, verse 10. Truly, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. What does Jesus mean when he says great faith? Well, look at the centurion. The centurion said, Lord, I don't need you to come to my house. Just say the word and it shall be done. That is great faith. You can move out uh, into the spirit realm without any problem when you exhibit great faith. So look at Matthew 15, verse 28. Jesus said, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. The woman wanted deliverance for her daughter. And Jesus said, it's the dispensation of the Jews. But she persisted. Look at Romans 4, verse 20. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. We're talking about Abraham here. The previous verse says his body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. So if Abraham had looked at the circumstances, there would be no Jewish race today. There would be no Isaac from which the Jewish race came forth. Isaac is a miracle child. The Bible describes it as a strong faith. So faith by its many positions in nature has to be the ability to focus on the unseen realm without being moved by the natural realm at all. So the opposite of walking by faith is called walking by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says that we walk by faith and not by sight. We can also define walking by faith as walking by what you believe and not by what you see. Walking by faith is walking in the unseen realm, folks. 
walking in the realm beyond sight in the supernatural. So we have to put on our socks as we look into the new things that God will help us to do. And why do we want to exercise our faith into that realm? Well, if one person or one minister begins to raise the dead, it inspires hundreds of others to do it too. When anyone in the body of Christ moves into a higher realm, the impact is felt by breakthroughs in the whole body. When the anointing of God starts moving in one part of the body, that faith will affect the other parts of the body. For example, if the largest church in, in say, San Diego is about 1,000 in number, then suddenly some ministry moves into 10,000 members, what will it do to the rest? It'll bolster their faith knowing that this is possible. It has an invisible influence throughout the whole body of Christ. So for that reason, every victory by any member of the body of Christ in this world is in a sense a victory for the whole body of Christ. Why? Because it stirs them up to a higher level of faith. We need to stir our faith. We need to understand the concept of faith. Faith means that you determine never ever again to move by what you see. To go by what you see, to walk by what you see, it's over with. It's in the spirit realm, hanging on to it, and, and that's where we live. Now listen, when Dr. Cho, Yongi Cho, the pastor of the world's largest megachurch located in South Korea, built his first building, it was an oversized building. It was built with funds from Christ for the Nations, and the building was so great in size that it was actually about 90% empty when the people were in it. So he actually was preaching to a couple of old ladies. He had to exercise his faith, didn't he? But it reached a stage of break-even time. In exercising faith, there is um, a level where you break even. For example, if you're believing God against a sickness, when you exercise faith, you know the sickness is conquered and the rest is recovery along the way. So keep in mind that faith has a rebuttal of the natural realm and then the natural realm conforms and flows along with the spirit realm. Okay, so what you're doing is you're believing for something and, and you see in the natural it's defying you. It's coming against you like, uh, like it's beating on you. But instead, you put that supernatural pressure on it, your covenant pressure, uh, believing and having faith in what the supernatural says, what the Bible says about you. And it finally, that pressure is so great, and it's a supernatural pressure, that it bends the natural realm and forms it into the the manifestation of what you want. See? Okay. Then it has to flow along with the spiritual realm. And it's important for us to understand the concept of faith in the Bible. Faith is a choice. It says, I know what I'm supposed to believe, and I agree as I choose it to live in that choice and never live in the natural. Instead, of, instead in the natural realm, we say, I choose to live in the spirit realm. Okay? And not to be moved by the things around me or by the things that are seen, but to be moved and motivated only by the things that are not seen. And you can get the things that are not not seen. The things that are not seen. Uh, check the Bible out. It'll tell you what God's plan for you is. And those are the things that are not visible to the naked eye. But you have to believe for them. And that's where your faith comes in. Listen, you're always in some kind of faith. You are either in line with what and in league with what the, the enemy is saying to you, which is the evil report, the, the fact that you open your coin purse and no money's in it, moths come out. You're in, you're in agreement with that. Or you are in agreement with what the Word of God says about you. Now, the, the thing is, is I always school my students and I say, what do you believe? When they ask me a question, I say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, what do you believe? Especially when they have a question of like, oh, well, how come I don't have any more money? Or how come God doesn't meet my need? Or how come God doesn't heal me? And blah, 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 blah. Well, what do you believe? What is it that you believe? Then they, I make them tell me what it is that they believe. And inevitably they see when they're saying what they believe that they, they slipped out of that into that habitual draw that the old man has, that old nature has, that draws you away from that, that uh, newfound belief system that you're walking in. Now, um, we have to be moved by thing, not be moved by things around us or by the things that are seen, but to be moved and motivated only by the things that are not seen. Between last week's lesson and this lesson, you have been introduced to the concept of faith. In this series, we're going to move more deeply into that realm to see how the substantiating has to move down into the rebuttal for success and the various ways that we release our faith in God. 
Did you receive this today? I pray that you did. If you need further explanation of the message or understanding of it, contact me. I can be reached at masterstouchhs at gmail.com. I don't give you my phone number because I'm teaching continually back-to-back -back lessons and I'm broadcasting all the time, and I don't have time to talk on the phone. But if you email me, I will respond to you, and I do check my email on a regular basis. That's masterstouchhs at gmail.com. masterstouchhs at gmail.com. You know... Living the Word comes to you every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time right here on Spreaker.com. And joining me for these broadcasts is Pastor Karen Weitzman. We take you into God's Word from over 2,000 years ago and teach you how to live in the Word of God today. That's every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Be sure to join us and learn how to live in the Word today. All right, folks, I should have a trumpet blast here. Actually, uh, I think I will have a trumpet blast here sometime. <laughs> Just give me a minute, okay? I would like to have this one. Um, and I'm going to do this because I, I want it to be there. I want you to get the impact. Just give me a half a second here. And there it is. Let's add to it, and then let's do this. Let me bring this over here. And are you ready? Join us September 11th through September 15th for E-Crusade 2017, broadcast from 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. and once again at 7 p.m. for E-Crusade Fireside Chat, where you'll get to meet our speakers personally, right here on Spreaker.com. We will bring you continual daily broadcasts from the Word of God on this year's theme, which is God's power evidenced in His children. We have scheduled a variety of very anointed pastors, ministers, and lay clergy from all over the globe to share the Word of God and all of its nuances on our subject. You won't want to miss this e-crusade. We're archiving our daily broadcasts on Spreaker.com, YouTube, Twitter, Google+, and on our website, www.themasterstouchhs.org. That's themasterstouchhs.org. Join us September 11th through the 15th daily, 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. and again at 7 p.m. And we look forward to your joining us for E-Crusade 2017. Listen, brethren, Proverbs 4, verse 7 tells us wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all of your getting, get understanding. That's exactly what we're doing here, my friends, seeking for and gaining God's wisdom. So make sure you're keeping Jesus Lord of your life. The Master's Word is a subsidiary of the Master's Touch Healing School of Ministry International, a 501c3 organization. Have a blessed and wonderful week. We'll see you again for the Master's Word on Monday mornings at 10 a.m. right here on Spreaker.com. God bless you.